Hello, welcome to our final lecture for Humanities 101 um, and uh, our final week of the course. You guys have done a great job this entire semester. I'm really impressed with the level of work, the level of commitment, the level of engagement that you have with each other. I appreciate all that um, and I appreciate you being in the part of the class. Um, I'm going to uh, do one more lecture here to talk about uh, the themes of this week and to kind of wrap up the course in general. Before I do that, let me mention a couple of things um, about the business of the course and where we're at. The first is do not forget you have an exam that you need to take starting Friday morning and running through Monday. Uh, you can take that exam. You'll have 90 minutes to take the exam and figure out how to respond to the, uh, to the questions. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is uh, you will not have any reading notes this week. No need for, for doing reading notes. Uh, we're just going to work on the project, work on studying for the exam, and work on reading, reading the materials for this week. But I will say about the reading notes. Um, somebody asked me about why haven't they gotten grades on them. Um, the reading notes uh, are not really a thing that I need to grade very closely unless you're just not doing it or unless you're trying to fake your way through the notes. So I use the reading notes um, to kind of go back and check you if I need to. As long as you're doing the reading notes, you're going to get credit for those reading notes. Um, I don't tell you this early on because I want you to put effort into it, but I'm going to give you credit for the reading notes as long as they're there. If, it, if it's clear that there's a problem, that you don't know things in the class, that you're missing out on major parts of the materials, then I can go back and look at your notes. Uh, I've seen a couple of the projects that people are doing. Great work there. Um, keep on posting those and keep on uh, thinking about what you're, uh, what you're working on to represent your ideas and experiences this semester. Let's go ahead and jump into the PowerPoint. And um, think about how, why zombies matter. The uh, background, if you don't recognize it, is from the second season of The Walking Dead, um, which, if you don't know, recognize that, is a major show about zombies. So this week's lecture, uh, We Zombie, uh, Zombies as a Human Metaphor, and it's our final lecture for humanities. Let's go ahead and jump into it. What is a zombie? Maybe I should. Let's see if I can move that. I don't know if you're if that's moving that for you or just me, but uh, what is a zombie? I think it's a, a pretty good question. We had a reading this week that helped you answer that question a little bit, gave you a little bit of the history of zombies, um, but basically the idea of uh, uh, an, un, an undead person, a person who has died and then uh, come back or didn't quite die and is in kind of this mid-state. Um, but that's not really the real question. I think the real question for us is, what is a zombie in our culture? Why do we care about a zombie? Um, and why do we tell so many stories about zombies? And again, as we've done all semester in thinking about apocalyptic issues, the question is not really so much why is a zombie interesting, but how does the apocalypse help us understand what we do when we do humanities? This picture, if you don't recognize it, is from The Walking Dead season two, um, where uh, Carol's daughter um, becomes a zombie. So, what does a zombie represent? Why do zombies matter? I'm gonna move my screen face again. Uh, why do zombies matter? What do they represent? Uh, I tweeted this tweet um, back on March, uh, I'm sorry, April 16th, um, after the, uh, a number of activists stormed the um, Lansing to protest the stay at home order. Um, and uh, there was uh, an, a couple of images taken of those protests 
and they looked a lot like zombies to me, so I tweeted this tweet. Do zombies represent protesters, or do zombies represent a particular kind of angry protester? Does rob zombies represent uh, part of our human nature that we try to hide, that we don't, that we don't bring out? Does zombie hood represent what we are most afraid we are? Just this kind of mindless walking drone who just wants to eat brains. What do zombies represent? When we think about zombie representation, we have to think about um, many of the ideas that were in the uh, How the Zombie Represents America's Greatest Fears article, but also many of the different types of zombie things that we watch. A zombie can represent our fear of, of the mob, or our zombie can represent our fear of disease, or our zombie can represent the fear of the other, somebody who is different from our culture, our race, our, our gender, our sexuality. Our zombie can, a zombie can represent our fear of death, or maybe about the, the uselessness of life and what the point of it is. Zombies have many different representations. And when we're talking about this idea of representation, we're talking about an idea of metaphor. So uh, as you can see in front of you, this slide uh, talks about what a metaphor is. The word metaphor comes from the ancient Greek word metapherion, which means to carry over or to transfer. A metaphor carries meaning from one concept to another by stating or implying that one is the same or like the other. So a metaphor does this work for us where we can talk about things that we wanna talk about, but we can talk about them in more interesting or more complicated or more uh, simple. We can talk about them in ways that help us un uh, express our ideas about them. So in the, in the graphic to your left, being a zombie is a lot like going to college. You are a zombie when you go to college. So let's think uh, about this a little more. Almost any act of representation can be metaphorical. That means almost anything we might experience, anything we might, uh, might I'm sorry, there's a lot of noise going on in the house. Uh, anything we might try to use to represent something else, that is metaphorical. So uh, let's take a look at this. might represent, uh, recognize that uh, video from uh, Plants vs. Zombies. If we think about the, the video game, Plants vs. Zombies, this very simple yet engaging and addicting game that appeared on iPads and iPhones a long time ago, what does it represent? Is it just the silly little thing with smiling sunflowers and uh, silly looking zombies? What does plants versus zombies represent? If the idea that any act of representation can be metaphorical is true, then what we can say is that maybe plants versus zombies mean something. It means something more than just a silly iPhone game you might play while you're waiting for the bus or sitting in a doctor's office. Or maybe it means something more than just a piece of entertainment that somebody made for us. Maybe it's trying to represent something. Maybe the idea that because there's only one other human that appears in a, the, the game, some kind of uh, post-apocalyptic salesman, maybe the idea of plants versus zombies is the world has become emptied of humans who have any kind of brains. And all we have left is plants to defend us, the plants are taking back the world. Maybe there's a representation of, of the, our fear of the global warming, our fear of climate change to the point where all humans 
will die and we will rely on plants to save us. The act of representation is an act of creation. When you try to represent something, you are creating something because you are using your brain and your ideas and your language and your, your images and your artistry. You are trying to represent something, so you are creating something. And the act of creation is almost always about creating meaning. Very rarely do we as humans create something where we're not trying to make something meaningful. I suppose we could argue that Disney's zombies is not meaningful, but even uh, even that, even that that silly kind of thing that is created just to make money has some sense of representation. It reveals something about us, and it reveals something about our experiences. And so, any act of creation is about creating meaning, and metaphor is meaning. What would the metaphor of Disney's zombies be? Well, maybe the awkwardness of dating, maybe the awkwardness of the teen years, or maybe they're trying to represent something about difference and class and, um, and race and how one, one class thinks they're better than another and how you come together despite that. This idea that, uh, the act of representation is an act of creation. The act of creation is about creating meaning, and meaning is metaphor. Well, this is what we do in the humanities. The humanities asks you to study representation. It asks you to study creation, and it asks you to study meaning. It asks you to engage in these human acts so that you can better understand how we go about experiencing humanity through the things that we represent, create, and make meaningful. Representation. What does that mean? Well, as human beings, we have experiences. We have things that we go through. We've got uh, uh, traumas, and we've got big and traumas small, and uh, tragedies big and tragedies small, and joys big and joys small. We have many things we experience. Sorry. And in those many things we experience, we have the need to represent those things, represent our, our feelings and our experiences, our ideas, our, our, what we want to talk about. So I've talked to you a little bit about growing up in the 80s. This is an actual Time magazine cover from Mar August 12th, 1985. Or is it 84? And what the cover tells you is that AIDS is a growing threat. And what is being done about this threat? Having um, now lived through a pandemic, or at least part, part of the way through a pandemic, um, you probably have some feeling of what does it mean to lose control of public health and to, to not be sure what's going to happen to you because of what's happening out there in the world with health issues. As a kid who grew up in the 80s, as a kid who was uh, 14, um, I guess I was uh, 12 when AIDS was discovered, and about 13 or 14 when it started to, to become a thing that people knew about, I can remember, and I picked this, this exact Time Magazine cover, because I can remember looking at this Time Magazine in my, in my history class in high school. As a kid who grew up at that time, to have suddenly have this thing called AIDS, that was not just a disease, but it was a disease that you got if you had sex. It was a, it was a pretty uh, important moment in my life, a pretty mo important moment in the, in the life of kids who were growing up at that time, to have the entire meaning of what it meant to hook up with somebody, change. We have uh, representation and then we have creation because our creation often grows out of what we're trying to represent, the ideas and the feelings and the, and the experiences that we're trying to represent. So we end up creating. And you may know this picture. Um, we'll get to what this picture is in just a moment. Our creations can take many different forms. 
for me, my form of creation often takes the form of poetry. For you, maybe it's music, or maybe it's art, or maybe it's uh, just um, creating yourself as a student right now. But our creations take many different forms. Representation, creation, meaning. So hopefully you know what this is. This is uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller. It was released in 1985. Um, and it shook the world. And there's been many, many interpretations of the meaning of thriller. But maybe one of the meanings of thriller was that it was trying to express something about, it was about our experiences in the world, in a world of AIDS. It was trying to represent that experience and it was trying to create it through dance and music and makeup and, and drama. And, it tried to pass along meaning to its audience as the audience tried to discover what it meant that Michael Jackson was a zombie who was going after this woman. And maybe what it meant that Michael Jackson was a zombie was that teenage sex equals AIDS, which equals zombies. Seems a little inconceivable now because the times have changed so much, but there was a time when we, when we said that, uh, that when, when our culture said that if, you, if you're gonna have sex, you're gonna die. So the best way to not die is not have sex. Or if you have sex, you're a sinner. And the best way not to be a sinner is to wait until you're married. That was the culture that I grew up in. And I think actually that was a good, um, a good portion of what thriller means, where it represents the idea of teenage sex and it creates something to try to express AIDS and the zombies become a metaphor that holds on to this idea of teenage sex and AIDS. What do we learn from studying representation, creation and meaning? What do we get out of this humanities study? Well, we get an aesthetic appreciation of the arts. We, we can look at different types of art, painting and sculpture and drama and, and uh, poetry and movies and um, comic books, opera, any number of different types of art, we can look at them and we can build some appreciation for them. Maybe we don't become great fans of them, but we can build some appreciation of them. I'll just say, since we have a number of great uh, uh, zombie movies here on the screen in front of you. Shaun of the Dead, the one down there at the bottom in the middle. Awesome. One of my favorites. We also get to, uh, when we study the humanities, recognize others' experiences. This is a novel called Zone One. It's by Colson Whitehead, um, who is an African-American uh, novelist. Uh, he's about my age. He's a, he's a brilliant guy, and he's written some really amazing books. Um, you should check out The Intuitionist. It's a really great book. Zone One was his novel about, um, about segregation and blackness and growing up in a country that tries to separate you from um, other people because of the color of your skin. And it was a zombie story. Maybe, maybe studying the humanities allows us to learn a respect for human production about what it means to produce and what, why people do that production. It allows us to understand that humans do need to produce. It's what we do. And we produce in many different ways for many different reasons. One of the most valuable things of, uh, of the humanities is to build an understanding of common humanity. Un unlike when, with the uh, Colson Whitehead idea of looking at others' experiences, we can then move to understanding common humanity, that, um, that different people from different worlds, from different experiences, still have within them a common humanity. So they share the same types of emotions. They share the same types of hopes and desires. They are humans together in the world. This photo from The Walking Dead. 
which has not always been great with trying to express different people's experiences in common humanity, by the way. And I think one of the one of the greatest aspects of the humanities for me, because I'm always interested in the polit political and I'm always interested in issues of justice and democracy and power. One of the greatest aspects of the humanities is it, it has a social function. It makes us more aware of the situation around us and it makes us try to fight more for justice and democracy for coming together and talking about ideas. This uh, comic is from Sean Bieri, who is a uh, editorial comic, comic uh, editorial artist and, um, and uh, pop culture artist from Hamtramck. I want to uh, just quickly go through these again. Um, why do we study the humanities? For aesthetic appreciation, for recognition of others' experiences, to respect human production, to understand common humanity, and to recognize that the humanities has a social function in helping us become active as citizens. We're almost done with this humanities course. And my hope is that the work we've done here this semester have helped you build this aesthetic appreciation and has helped you build this recognition of others and has helped you understand common humanity and to build a sense of the aesthetic, uh, um, to build a sense of, of what it means to study culture, to understand that the humanities is about fighting for a better civilization. I appreciate you being a part of this class and I appreciate you as a human. I hope that you do amazing things as a human and because I believe in the humanities, I believe that whatever it is that you do will be amazing because human life and human culture human representation and human creation, human meaning is amazing. And we have all the metaphors in the world to help us explore that. Thanks for being a part of the class.